Hi YouTubers, oh, I've been looking at this long enough, wondering what approach to use for this wintry scene. Into snow in London, everything grinds to a halt, schools close, public transport is disrupted, trains don't run, absolute hopeless. Because we're not used to it really, we don't get a lot of snow down this far south in the UK. Mostly uh, up in the north and Scotland that gets the brunt of it. We tend to stay warmer near the continent. But uh, the whole country is covered in snow. It's all coming from the Arctic. Oh, from Russia. Blame them. Uh, right, we've got a piece of uh, 90 pound, uh, not hot pressed paper, Windsor and Newton. It's about 45 degrees angle, not temperature. That's well below freezing at the moment. I've had to put my, my, my electric, my overhead lights on because the windows are more or less covered with ice and snow. Uh, which is good because it means that heat isn't escaping through the uh, roof. Uh, right, so, uh, colours, uh, I'm using this cadmium yellow light, I've not used it before in watercolour. Lemon yellow, yes, and the cadmium yellow medium, which was a lovely, lovely colour. But I couldn't get it at the time, so I bought a couple of tubes of, of this one. Uh, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, paints grey and burnt sienna. I was thinking about the, 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 the uh, ideal colours, colour mixes for pines and winter. And I always come back with uh, uh, Windsor blue and hooker's green. But once you start throwing colours like that at the uh, painting, when you know all the mixes your normal palette uses or has on it, um, it complicates things and it tends to get overused because uh, I'm not used to it. That's what I'm saying, saying that. So it's best to, to, to get to know your basic palette. It doesn't matter what it is. It, it doesn't have to be what I'm using. This is the basic Ron Ransom palette with the exception of the uh, Burnt Sienna which I, I'm sure he used, but uh, there are so many colours, but get to know your, your mixes your, from your basic palette, because you can more or less get everything you need, especially for the, the, the British climate, British landscape. So we don't have very arid deserts and things which require different sort of the odd colour. But this is the that, that's my basic one. So what I'll do, it, I, I, I'll wet it. I'll wet it. So I want, I want to go back to I want to do a couple. I'll do a watercolor for you here, and I'm going to do another one for Patreon, my patrons. I've no, no drawing, no plan, I'm just going to go straight in. Right, let's have a... Uh, well, let's have some, some, some uh, raw sienna. All over. I'll put a shape to the landscape, like it's right hilly. And then we'll have some other. Nice, let's have some light red in there. And try that cad yellow. Paint the snow, but not too heavy. And then we'll uh, put in some cloud, some ultramarine and some light red. Some nice, nice colours going on there. Somebody asked me a while ago why doesn't uh, the, the paint, the blue, go green when you put it on the yellow? But it has there a little bit. But that's okay. We've got plenty of colour in the sky. It, it will dry a lot lighter. And I, I shall give it a hand because this this paper does take a lot of a lot of drying. It, it's very porous, but super paper. <coughs> Oh, 
I'm sure you found as uh, beginners and intermediate painters that you can keep on buying material. We all do it. You go to an art store, we go online and you say, well, I like that brush and I'd like this and I'd like that. And you buy loads of stuff, loads of brushes. I've got hundreds of brushes and I've thrown hundreds away. Uh, and really, you can you can make do with very simple materials: a flat brush, a, a big wide brush. This old Japanese brush I'm going to use for my tree outlines. Uh, got a long rigger here, which I forgot I had. Or did I? Not one I bought. I bought a, a lovely rigger. Um, I don't think it was a rigger. I think it was a, a round. I can't find it in the melee on my table for the moment. It was a Windsor and Newton brush, which I hardly ever use. And I think, well, why, did I, why did I buy it? Oh, there it is. Well, it's a lovely brush. But it's, it's, it's 13 pounds that was, and it's a, it's a number five Kalinsky Sable. But it, it doesn't really come to a point. But it, it, it does things, but, but it was totally unnecessary. I just had a bit of money burning a hole in my pocket. And art materials and me, well, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Must have it. I've, I've seen people in my old art group with the latest watercolour boxes, big, large, large boxes, with about 100 colours, all the tints, all artist quality, very expensive. How many of those are you going to use? Half a dozen. But we do it, don't we? So, uh, I'll get my, I'll, I'll, I'll use my hate car to do the, uh, so I'll have the blue, that's a nice blue. And I want a bit of green, so let's put that in the middle of green. It makes a different range of greens, but I want plenty of blue in that, so let's just, more blue. all over the place. It's just the background. I'll put some blue behind there. You see, I'm not used to that uh, that yellow. I'll put some blue in there. Okay, then we'll put some warmer, some sienas. Sienna and a bit of blue. Thick, when you paint, paint on wet, you need thick paint. Otherwise, it just doesn't register. It disappears into, into the murk like it is there. So look, these are more or less tube consistency colours. I put them out yesterday, right, nice dark. A bit of red in there as well, I think. Right? And there I can put more in if I wish. But I'm going heavy, heavy on on the horizon here because that's where I'll well, it's a counter change with the with this with the snow. All right, let's uh, put in a bit of okay. I don't think that might lift out. Lifting out card. Let's see. So it only really works when you've got dark paint. Okay. 
Okay. See, my greens have changed totally. Keep this simple as possible. Oh, we want a bit of a, a bit of foliage. When you're using the hake, you've got to control the the paint, the the, uh, the water in the brush. Sorry. See, because this is very rough, it. Uh, Following the uh, the lie of the ground here. I'm going to go very heavy, quite heavy in that background when it dries a bit. Very easy to overdo all this when you you want to paint simply, but you end up putting far too much in. So let's just come along that path there with a bit of. Bit of this and that bit of a stuff showing through. Okay, I can put a little bit of detail with a rig, but I want to go back to to that background now. Start beefing up some of this in here. It'll still soak in a bit, but. Uh, We'll have to ditch this hake soon. Keep saying that, but uh, get around to it. It's just about had it. I was losing hairs faster than me. Okay. Right. Now we want a bit of bit of calligraphy in there. Let's go back to the card. Now we've got some darker bits in there. See that they've soaked in. That's how porous the paper is, and I must drink my tea. Uh, but before I do, I'm going to just put in a bit of, bit of shadow. Showing some cast shadows of, from the light bushes just poking through. Let's just have a bit down there. Light coming from the front. I just want this to, to look simple. The, the idea of less is more. 
Show the shadow in there. Okay, I'll give that a bit of a dry. And then maybe I can just strengthen up some of the tops of those trees. I don't want them to look summery trees, I want them to look winter trees. Now, while, while um, well, originally when I used to when I started with colour painting about forty over forty years ago now, I would buy f uh, full imperial sizes and cut them down by lo loose sheets, and I would I would stretch them if they were about one hundred and forty pounds. I'd stretch them on on a big board, a drawing board, but I found that. Th uh, uh, that um, where, if you clip them, when you uh, when you uh, wet it, the paper it will expand, of course. But if you stretch it and then reclip it, and you do that several times, the paper stays lovely and flat. Now this is this is a lightweight paper. I'm a bit burnt umber now, a bit burnt umber, and a bit of a bit of ultra. That'd be a good cool colour for the tops of the trees. More, more blue. So let's uh, just put in. Oh, see how rough this is. You can hear it. So you just have to compensate. You won't. Hmm. I'm struggling with this because of the paper, the roughness of the paper, and the amount of water on this little brush here. Just trying to get the uh, decent shape of some of these. That's a more blue. Now, I've got them all the same and I don't really like that. So I'll just make this one a bit larger. That's a bit better. Well, I can swim over here. But you don't want them to compete. Flicking. You get used to it after a while, what the paper will do and what it doesn't. Drag in some detail. I will put some. Uh, some trunks and things. I mean, I'll have to. I'll have to dry it though. Otherwise, we'll, we'll lose it all. Get a shadow in here. Okay, let's get a little bit of that in 
right here. Nice warm colour. Payne's grey mixes beautifully, I said it's just black, with um, burnt sienna. It's a lovely rich dark. Okay, I'm going to dry that a little bit now and we'll just put in some chunks. I don't really like is uh, when you go off the page it looks as if you, you've fitted it all in between object between like it looks like I've fitted the trees in according to the sheet of paper instead of just a, a slice of the, the whole view off stage so to speak. So take your paintings off. Right now let's get this get this rigger, see what we can do with the rigger. Oh, that's a bit of mystery. Just lose that in the undergrowth. I've got a, my box easel here, this is my, like the, uh, the portable studio and I've got a tray sitting on it with some stuff out of it, drink me tea. And that's quite, they're quite dark, there's not a lot of dark in the foreground, so let's just rectify that. Just put a bit of burnt sienna and a bit of paint grey. You can use ultramarine. Great little brushes. Okay. Alright, so now. Uh, Try 
one lit up the, the hill. Bit of shadow. Okay, that'll do. That's all we're going to do. A couple of birds, I think. Right, that'll do. That's. Oh, I'm trying to get under, out of this situation. My knees are uh, stretched just about underneath there. Right, that's uh, got a clip. And a bit of masking tape, which is here. So, well, I don't find anything here. But some of the uh, artists on the Ron Ransom. Dis disciples and British impressionists that all showing showing each other or posting pictures of the mess they were working. So I'm not alone. All right, uh, let's put the ivory on it if I like. Although it's a uh, right well, That's quite a nice little winter scene for us. Let's just zoom out a little bit. There we are. So we've got plenty of warm in the background and warm in the foreground, but we've got this is just cold, cold. So you've got the contrast of the warms and the and the and the cools. <coughs> I should have done that a bit better, really. Uh, I, I got carried away with that with the green and put that in. I should have put that in a much cooler colour, but I've compensated that by going over it with these sort of elm type trees. Little figure going home. Uh, about figures, I'm not good at figures, so I, I vowed to practice, but I, I didn't. I did some initially for a, a week or so. But spend half an hour with yourself with your paints and, and a spare bit of paper and just doodle figures. Um, get the proportions right. A great, a great uh, uh, explainer of, uh, of proportion of the body simply is Alfonso. Done, D U N N. Loads of stuff on YouTube. He's a superb craftsman, and he'll give you the proportions. Like the head is one sixth, and the, the, the waist is half, and, and, and the the thighs and the and the shin area. They're, they're two heads, all relative and very easy to understand, but not so easy to force yourself into practicing it. But it's well worth it. I'm encouraging a number of friends on, uh, on, 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 on Facebook and the various Facebook pages to, to practice their figures because you just don't really get landscapes without figures. Uh, we, we make all sorts of excuses, well I spoil the view and all that sort of thing. They're the ones that mucked it up in the first place. But not so, put figures in because that's what we are. Try, try them, just have some fun with them. Right, see you soon folks. Bye bye.